So pickaxes have been completely reworked. And alongside a rework of magnets and a bunch of crafting recipe changes, update 7 has been jam-packed with changes to Vault Hunters. So we're going to look at some of those now and look how it will impact your game going forwards. And of course, with an update of this magnitude, we needed to add another floor to the guide house. Welcome to the mining base camp. This is where we're going to do our little bit of testing and it has a special feature, a vault portal. Because we're going to need to be in and outside the vault constantly, this just makes a little bit more sense. So the first big change is that the tool vice is gone. I mean, I guess you can still technically use it for decoration, but the actual functionality of it has been removed for the new pickaxes. What you're going to need instead is this tool station, and it's pretty cheap to craft. It's just a few chromatic iron, a couple of driftwood, and a crafting table. And when you go into it, you'll find that you have access to pickaxes, axes, shovels, hammers, and sickles. Now, these tools are all going to do something different. Pickaxes, axes, shovels, and everything, they're all very self-explanatory. They do the exact same thing that they do in normal vanilla Minecraft. But the hammer and the sickle are slightly different. First up, the hammer. The hammer will break a 3x3 three three block instead of just breaking the one normal block. But just be aware that with the normal hammer, you will not get the blocks that you break. So it's fantastic for building tunnels, but not great for resource gathering. Now the sickle works the same as shears. So you can quickly just get rid of leaves, wool, and more importantly, the really annoying cobwebs. Which combined with the fact that vault swords cannot break cobwebs, makes this tool very, very useful. Now, with each of the associated tools, you will see that there is a prefix here that says plus picking, axing, shoveling, hammering, or reaping. These will become important later on. But essentially, these prefixes basically are what makes your tools what they are. Anything with picking will act like a pickaxe, anything with shoveling will act like a shovel. And when you look in the tool station, you'll see that there are multiple versions of each of the tools. And as you go up, you'll see that some of them are locked behind certain vault levels. So you're going to start out at level zero with a chromatic iron pickaxe. After that, you've got chromatic steel at level 20, Volterite at level 35, Melded at level 50, Black Chromatic Steel at 65, Echoing at 80, and finally Prismatic at 90. Why they removed the rainbow from the Prismatic Pickaxe, I will never know. Now there's two main differences with each level of Pickaxe, because as you can see they've all got the same mining speed and durability, however the two differences are the amount of repair slots they've got, so how many times you can actually repair them without having to make a new one, and secondly the capacity capacity increases each time you go up. So each tier gains plus 50 capacity up to a maximum of 400. Now what is capacity? Well capacity is basically how big your pickaxe is when it comes to upgrading it. The old jewels are completely gone. They basically are functionless now, although you can smelt them down into soul dust, which will give you a few extra soul shards. What you can do now, though, is craft one of these jewels, and that takes Wutodic Silver, Gemstone, and Vault Bronze, and that will give you a special jewel which has a certain feature on it. Now, there's three aspects to every jewel. It's quality, it's attributes, and it's size and size is very important. Now, as you can see with this one, it is a chip jewel, it's size 51, and the suffix that it gives is plus 0.8% item rarity. Now, that 51 size is what's going to come off of your capacity when you add the jewel onto the pickaxe. If we add the 51 size jewel to our chromatic iron pickaxe, which has 100 capacity, that will leave us with 49 capacity for another jewel. If the jewel is higher than the capacity, you're not going to be able to add it. So what this means in terms of your looting is basically the smaller the jewel, the better, because it's going to use less capacity. And equally, the higher the capacity of your pickaxe, the better it is because the more jewels it can fit in. In the early game, you're probably going to need multiple tools because you can only add a couple of jewels in that capacity. However, later game, you may only need one pickaxe that will do everything for you. Now, crafting jewels inside a vault forge is not the only way that you can get them. They can also be found inside the vault, and specifically in gilded chests and in treasure chests. You can also occasionally find them in your completion chests as well if you finish the vault objective. 
So if you run around the vault and you find a room with lots of gilded chests, after a couple of loots, you should be able to find one of the jewels. Which actually means that the TNT rooms and the puzzle rooms are now some of the best rooms to loot, because they have gilded chests absolutely everywhere. So now that we've looked at the size mechanic of jewels and had a look at where to get these jewels in the vault, let's take a look at what benefits they can give you. So let's start out nice and simple and look at these suffixes that you can get from these jewels. So starting out we have mining speed, pretty self-explanatory, the same with reach and durability. Those all work exactly as you would expect. Now copiously will in effect allow you to get more gems from your vault ores because you've got a chance of doubling them. Now item quantity and item rarity are fairly simple, you're more likely to get rare items with item rarity, you're more likely to get more items with item quantity, that's essentially how that works. There's debate over which one of those is better, but basically it does what it says on the tin for those. Next up you have soulbound which allows you to keep your item if you die in the vault, essentially negating the recovery cost from it if you were to die with it. You also have trap disarm chance which essentially means that if you were to get a trap chest there is a chance that it will activate and you won't get the trap and then finally you have a percentage vanilla immortality. Now this one is a little bit interesting because until you get to 100% it's essentially the same as adding more unbreaking levels to your tools. It makes them last longer because there's a chance that you won't use the durability. Once you get to 100% that tool will never break outside of the vault. Essentially replacing the echoing jewel that you used to be able to get which allowed your tools to become invincible. So those are the nice and simple ones, fairly straightforward. Now moving on to something a little bit more complicated and you have the affinity jewels. So a little bit of background here. What used to happen is that each of the chests would have a different tool that you would use to be able to break them quickly. So a wooden chest had an axe, a gilded chest had a pickaxe, and a living chest had a hoe for example. But now, a pickaxe or any tool will work just as well as long as it has the affinity property. So what I'll do is I'll add the wooden affinity onto this echoing pickaxe, and then take the prismatic pickaxe that doesn't have the wooden affinity. So now if we go into a vault and try and break the wooden chest with the prismatic pickaxe that doesn't have wooden affinity, you'll see that it very, very, very slowly breaks. However, if we switch to our echoing pick with the wooden affinity, it basically breaks super quickly. Do not try and break anything without having affinity. You can still loot them as normal, no problems at all, but just don't try and break them. It's really not worth your time. And now because the Echo and Pick is a higher level pickaxe, we can start adding a bunch of the other affinities and it will eventually allow us to break pretty much every chest in the game and we still have a little bit of capacity left over. But if we were to try that with a chromatic iron pick, then we wouldn't have enough capacity to be able to mine all of the chests using just this one tool. Now on top of the affinity system, there's also the chance to change these pickaxes into other tools. And that is with the jewels that give things like axing and shoveling. There should also be a reaping one as well but unfortunately, it seems to have been missed off the config files. These things just happen, welcome to alpha testing. So if we take our black chromatic steel pickaxe and add an axing onto it, it will turn into a black chromatic steel cutter. And then we could add shoveling on to make it into a proper paxel. And what we can do with this now is we can break dirt, we can break wood, and we can break stone, no problems at all. This is absolutely fantastic in the overworld because you can make one tool to deal with everything. And then if you make that immortal, well, then it's gonna be even better. And on top of that, if you have a hammer and you have a plus one hammer size, you can then increase that three by three to a five by five area, and you can mine a lot more than you would do previously. And if you wanna keep those blocks, just add a picking jewel, and that will allow you to keep the blocks that you mine. The final two to cover are just the smelting jewel and the pulverizing jewel. The smelting jewel will just automatically smelt things for you, and the pulverizing jewel will break things down like turning gravel into sand. Those two work exactly the same as the jewel did previously, so not much to cover there. Now jewels come in four rarities. You have chipped, which will only roll one modifier for you. You have flawed, which will roll two. You have flawless, which will roll three. 
and you have perfect which will roll four. As a general rule of thumb, the more modifiers it can add, the better it is, but just be aware of the size. Because for example, if you have four chipped, which all add one modifier, and they're all size 20, but then you have a perfect with a size 90, it's going to be better to add the four chipped rather than the one perfect. Now if you end up with a load of jewels that you don't want, maybe they're all super scrappy ones, then what you can do is come over to a vault recycler and then start breaking them down and it will give you gemstones, silver scrap and water dye and those are the things that you need to craft more gems. Pretty much recycling that's kind of what the vault recycler does so yeah that is basically jewels and pickaxes and tools all pretty much covered but there's more to this update than just the pickaxes let's talk magnets because magnets have been changed a lot as well your old magnet will not work it will not re-roll just basically throw it in the bin. What you're going to need to do now is come and craft yourself a magnet in the vault forge and it will give you an unidentified magnet which you can then roll like any other gear piece. Now the majority of your magnets are probably going to roll as scrappy and all of the scrappy ones have exactly the same stuff they just have durability, range and velocity. Now even though these are the same not all magnets are created equal because some have really high velocity and range and some have really low so that's going to depend entirely on how you roll it. However sometimes you can roll even better and get very lucky and this will give you additional prefix and suffix slots. These work pretty much the same as your vault armor and they actually use the artisan station exactly the same as your armor does. So if we take this over and then wild roll this we can see that actually gives me item rarity and and mining speed now as well as increased range and there's a bunch of different modifiers that you can get on this. You can get mining speed, range, velocity, reach, increased damage, item quantity, item rarity, durability, soul bound, soul chance, copiously and mana regen. They may add more but those are the ones that are here now and I'll tell you right now getting plus 36% mana regen on a magnet that's pretty huge. But apart from that, they work exactly the same as they did previously. No real crazy things have been changed about the magnets beyond that, except for one very important thing. It no longer uses mana. Magnets are now completely mana free. This is a change that I am very happy about because mana shield is now even better. Now, one really big change that has been made as well is to the mystery box loot table. So previously, you'll have seen people getting Omega Pogs from their mystery boxes, but this is now impossible. As we enter these loot boxes out, you'll see that it's primarily Emeralds, Diamonds and Laramar that you'll get, and very occasionally you'll get some Vault Platinum and some Echo Ore. Although now, you only get one Echo Ore, instead of the three that you're used to. Now the good news on top of this though, is that you won't constantly be spammed with gold and iron that you used to get, because those have been removed as well. Basically, you're going to get one of these resources. It's more consistent, and you still have a chance of getting an Echo, so it's not too bad, but in general it has been nerfed quite a bit. But with every nerf comes a new amazing feature, and we are in the vaults because this new feature is the new POI system. Now it's not going to affect every room, just some rooms, but check this out. This is actually built into the vault itself instead of being placed there afterwards. And it looks super cool. And it's not just this one. If we go down here, we will find some of the other POIs, including this one here. And this one is super, super cool because it's a dragon. A little mini dragon and you can just go in and loot all of the coin piles around the dragon. Honestly, I hope they do a lot more of this because these are really, really awesome. But I'm not gonna spoil all of it for you. I want you guys to go and see these yourself, but just be aware these new ones exist and you will know about it when you find them. They look amazing and there's a chance that some of them are gonna be insanely good and some of them will be less good. But it gives a lot more variety and it makes looting a lot more fun. You still have your bog standard POIs, but I'm hoping they move more towards this sort of style because it's a much, much more engaging experience. 
Now, they also seem to be cracking down a little bit on the cheese strategies. So you'll notice that when we go into the talents, there is something missing. What is that thing? It's reach. Now you've seen reach appear on pickaxes and all sorts as we've gone through today, but the actual reach talent has gone. And that is to stop the cheese strategy of going into a vault and breaking a spawner before it can actually spawn for you. So they decided to make reach a little bit harder to acquire. It is still technically possible to be able to do that strategy, but you're gonna need to sacrifice a lot more rather than just a few skill points. However, to help offset this in the overworld, they have added reach as a beacon power. So you can now get two levels of reach just by building a full powered beacon, which I think was a good thing to do because when you think about it in the overworld, reach can be quite useful and a beacon effect is something you'll only be able to get in the overworld. So yeah, great change here. Now, another great change that they've done as well is made some changes to the bounty system. So firstly, you no longer use vault bronze to re-roll bounties. What you need are these bounty pearls and they can be found inside wooden chests and then you just stick them in, select a bounty, and then just re-roll it. And that means that you're not going to need to use all of your vault bronze on here, and you can use it to upgrade your armor instead. But oh, it gets much, much better than that, because in Treasure Room Sand, you can find these lost bounties. And what that means is when you use it on a bounty table, you'll get access to a legendary bounty. So this one is 15 black opal ore and this will give a stupid amount of Vault XP. Like comparatively, this is a thousand, this is 12,000. That's the equivalent of finishing an entire vault and you can get these fundamental focuses, magnets, and just much, much more loot. It also doesn't stop you from completing a normal bounty. It just sits in the legendary bounty slot and runs alongside your normal bounties. They are really trying to make treasure rooms better because what they've done as well is they've rebalanced them all to make them more consistent and give you better rolls on higher level gear. So now, honestly, treasure rooms, really, really good. I'll leave a link in the description for all of the changes. I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything because we'd be here all day, but I will leave a link down if you wanna read about all of the changes that they have made to treasure rooms. Now, they've also made some changes to Vault Alloy that you use to craft your weapons and armor. It can no longer be found in the vault at all or in completion crates or anything like that. You're basically going to need to use chromatic steel in order to be able to make it. Or if you're feeling adventurous, use some Volterite. Personally, I'm always running out of Vault Alloy because I love crafting all of my gear myself but I'm running out of the Vault Dust a lot. So I'm hoping that they buff Vault Dust to go alongside this, maybe? Please, Iskal. But either way, that's something to be aware of. And the final thing to go through in this video is just to let you know that mending has been removed from the vault. So if you were taking a bunch of netherite pickaxes in with you so that you can go and clear out a room and then taking some experience nuggets or bottles of enchanting, that's not going to work anymore. Just make sure to go and repair your stuff between vault runs if you are using that strategy. So that's where we're going to leave the video for today, everyone. A big thanks to Jay for helping me out and covering most of these patch notes. I will leave a link to the detailed patch notes that he's created down in the description below. Now, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like. If you're not subscribed already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing more of these update videos if this video does really well. Thanks very much for watching everyone. I've been Hellfire Mage and I will see you next time.